Hi guys, Angela here and welcome back to Hobby Night. Today I will be painting a vampire, specifically his base actually for today, but this is the mini himself. So next week he will get finished up, but for the first time ever, we will have both base and miniature completed at the same time, which is why I'm tackling this first because we're going to tough this bad boy today. Um, so look forward to that and let's go ahead and get started. So. I have a little bit of an idea of what I want to do. Um, the shield, I'm actually going to end up treating somewhat Bretonian. Um, so I've picked up a, a couple of cool colors, Blood Angels Red, um, Talisar Blue, because I want to be very bright, but then I'm going to weather it as I lay colors down. The stone itself is going to be in Space Wolf Gray, as well as um, the stones here are going to be in Basilicum Gray. And then the dirt will be in a mix of Armageddon Dust, which will be my texture paint that I put down on the base itself but I'll also be using Talaron sand um, for the little bits here. But let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to be starting with a medium shade brush and my Space Wolf Gray, because that is the largest space I need to cover. And we'll get painting. This I've been very excited about because I've actually had it for quite a while. Um, I don't, there's not too much for like vampire counts or anything out anymore because they kind of got rid of that with, with Age of Sigmar. And I know they've started coming out with other things and there's stuff in Warcry, which I think, I don't actually remember which mini this specifically is. I'll look it up in the next part and make sure that I call that out. Um, but I forgot to check before we started filming, um, but that's okay. Uh, but I've had him for a little bit and I've been very much looking forward to painting him, but I wanted to make sure that I did all of it at once for a painting video for once. So that is the plan here. And already this blue is looking lovely. We're just kind of using our medium shade to spread this around. I guess I could have gone with a large shade, but I find sometimes the brush gets too overloaded and then you end up just having too much paint and it pools in weird ways and then you don't get a, as smooth of a finish. Whereas this is actually working very smoothly and spreading nicely. And we have finished the Space Wolf Gray on the Abhorrent Arch Regents base. I looked up what it was and I found it. So we will, we've got that all done. Um, the next step that I'm going to do is this inner portion, which is what I was talking about a little earlier with the yellow, blue, and red. Um, so let's go ahead and get started with that. I'm going to switch to a base small brush for this because I want a little bit more control, but I still want my brush to have a fair amount of paint on here because this filigree part that you can see here. We're going to also do that in gold. And then what I'm gonna end up doing is I'm going to layer and glaze over a little bit of the Space Wolf blue to age it, and then do a little bit of Skaven Dinge, um, maybe mixed with some Astromilitarum, or not Astromilitarum, um, Administratum gray, to basically make it look chipped and look like the um, color has basically aged and been partially destroyed, but I still want a little bit of that vibrancy. So we're gonna put those colors down first and then weather it. So let's get started. I'm going to put the blue down first because it is going to be the darker of the colors and the most likely to stain something else when I put it down otherwise. So we'll start with that one. And again, I'm going for kind of a Bretonian look. Um, I look forward to what they may or may not do with Bretonians when the old world stuff happens. Um, they are an army that is very like visually interesting to me, but I don't know if I'd really enjoy like mechanically their gameplay, but I've been playing, if you guys have seen Alchemical Rabbit, I play a lot of Total War. And so the cavalry, cause right now we're doing an empire campaign and the cavalry uh, aspect of that is, I'm, I'm finally understanding it a little bit better and I'm able to use those units. And so the Bretonians have really started appealing to me cause they have a lot of cavalry units. And I always think the knight miniatures, even the like old ones from Warhammer Fantasy are really, really cool looking. Mm 
So the Blood Angels Red was not quite layering the way that I wanted it to. It's a little too pale of a color. It's so bright that the pigment doesn't actually stick super well sometimes. And so I was struggling with it. And since this is detail and it's not gonna be that big of an area and I want to stand out, I switched over to Flesh Terror's Red. So I had started lining um, around his little foot that is here. And we have a much brighter pop of red now and I'm a lot happier with the color. So I'm glad that I switched that, but I want to make sure that you guys knew so you weren't going, that was weird. That red looked really pale when we last looked at it, but that is why it's brighter now. So we have the details to make it look as Bretonian as possible um, done. Uh, I think it looks great. I also think it looks super Bretonian. Um, what the next stage is, I'm going to let that dry and we're going to go ahead and move down here and we're going to, oh, there's a little, there's a little rat here. Um, I don't think he's alive though. And it makes me very sad because I noticed this earlier and it's a little sad, but we're going to go ahead and paint him and the dirt so that we can let this fully dry. And then after that is dried, we will come back and do a dry brush of Skaven Dinge, um, or sorry, Skaven Blight Dinge. Um, over the entire thing because I want to then glaze the Space Wolf Gray back on to give it a little bit of that blue tint again, but that will weather how bright this currently looks um, because it is very contrasted against it and probably doesn't fit the quite like dingy uh, darkness that this vampire is bringing with him um, as he goes forward into this corrupted city. So let's go ahead and start with the dirt. I'm going to use for that one, Taleron Sand, because um, I think this will blend nicely with my Armageddon dust that I'll be putting on the majority of the base to give it a texture um, so I can blend the two together and this will give me a nice base coat to work with. So let's get started. I'm going to be using my uh, small base brush again for this. I did, um, for this detail work, switch to a very small, um, point a five, five slash zero from Da Vinci, um, which is just a high end, um, like fine arts brush company, but they make some really nice, um, natural hair bristles and everything. And I like using those for my detail work, but let's go and get started with this color tone. Oh yeah. That's working very nicely with the color palette of the, uh, space wolf gray. And it's okay if I get it on the base because we're going to cover that up. And the little rat is painted. And the next step, basically, because I've got most of my basic colors down, um, the only thing I haven't done is the foot of the vampire and his little claw here. I will touch those up after I'm done with our next step, which is going to be dry brushing. So this is going to be my longest step, I think, um, just because it's going to be slightly time consuming, but we're going to start with dry brushing in Skaven Blight Dinge, like I said earlier. Then I'm going to, I think, dry brush a little bit of actually Mechanicus Standard Gray over top of it, because this also has a little bit more of a blue tone to it with this darker gray, which will blend nice. And then I'll do a final dry brush of Fenrisian gray, because this is a much lighter tone. And since this is Space Wolf Blue, I figure that would actually work as a really nice way to lighten and um, differentiate some of the dry brushing techniques or, or not techniques, but patches that we'll be doing. Cause I'm going to kind of keep it haphazard to look like it's worn and aged and everything, um, which I hope comes across. So that's the next step. We'll get started. But we're going to start with Skaven Light Dinge. So we'll get a little bit of paint onto our Small dry brush by Citadel. Um, this is a very well used dry brush, as you can see. Um, but we'll get a little bit of paint on here. Then take most of it off. And we're going to start dry brushing. And we're making sure to go over top the color portion because I do want it to fade and go back a bit. Hopefully it won't turn too green, but I don't think so. It's working pretty well so far. I 
dry brushing is done. And I'm actually very pleased with it. It came out great. This faded just like I wanted it to. The yellow, blue, and red all still pop, but it is muted and it looks like it's been worn. Here is the back side, which is a lot more subtle, but I like it. I even non oiled a little bit into the recesses on the back to make the crumbly side a little darker and have a little bit more contrast than the front side is, which is a little still smooth and not as weather worn and everything. So the next portion is going to be putting our texture paint on the base itself. So I have the Citadel Technical Armageddon Dust paint, which is a texture paint that sort of dries a little crackly, but not super crackly. Um, and I have this fancy texture tool by them. It's their medium texture tool. And this works just exceptionally well at moving this stuff around. Um, so if you ever get a chance to, and you want to splurge and get yourself just a unitask or tool that is effective, but really has very limited purposes, this is a good one and it's not terribly, terribly expensive, but it makes spreading texture paint so much easier. Because as you can see, it's kind of a big globby mess. If you've never used any of the Citadel technical paints or texture paints, um, it's okay that it looks like this. It's supposed to. Um, occasionally I've met some people who are just getting into painting and get one of these in a starter set, like the smaller pots, and then they come back to um, the game store I work at sometimes and they're like, oh my gosh, this paint was totally dried out, um, not realizing that it was designed to be that way because, you know, it's just not something a lot of people know about unless you are into this type of hobby thing. Um, so yeah, if you ever find that and you're a newbie and you're like, why is this paint so thick and like weird and looks like it's dried up? It's probably not um, if it says something on it like texture or technical or that kind of thing. But as you can see, we are just kind of using this little tool, the big flat side to sort of push this paint around and get it onto the base itself. And then we're gonna use the smaller side here to nudge it against the miniature so that we get a little bit of a cleaner, more controlled finish. And we're just gonna kind of spread this around and we'll get back to it in a second. All right, so I just wanted to make one other note about texture paints that I thought was important because I always forget this and I you kind of probably saw me start to do it. Um, you don't actually need a lot of this paint on your base to get a good solid texture um, and not have it end up being too gloopy or anything. So you can really spread this stuff thin. So make sure that when you're doing it, you know, just spread it thin. If you've got some excess, put it back in your pot, save it for later. Because yeah, we're going to get a great texture out of this just like this where it's very thin on the, the base and if you end up needing to add more you can just go back and add more um, it's a lot harder to take this texture paint back off without having to just completely redo everything you've already done um, than it is to add additional paint if you're like uh maybe that's not as textured as i want or maybe i want some sections that are kind of clumpy and it is done for now at least we have put the armageddon dust down as you can see it has dried quite nicely i am very very pleased with it originally i was thinking about putting agarath earthshade over this to just darken it and get, put some um, color into the recesses and everything but after having looked at this with the miniature itself or sorry with um what i did here and having compared it to this sneak preview of one of my Death Guard minis that we recently completed. Um, I actually think that, and it, I don't know how, oh, actually here on the back, you can see it a little better. So this is it with the Agrath or shade um, on it, and it darkens it a little bit. And I think ultimately, I actually don't want that. I like how bright this is. So I'm going to leave it as it is for right now. Next week, we are going to come back and we are going to paint the actual vampire that goes on this. And then at that point, once we have him finished and I can see what he looks like with this, that's when we'll decide on where we're actually placing our tufts. I do know which tufts I'm using. Um, we're going to be using the Army Painter Frozen Tufts, which you can get uh, for somewhere around $6.99. That's what my friendly local game store, Games of Berkeley, sells it at. Um, but I'm going to use these on the base itself. Probably not too many of them. I'm going to keep this base relatively... Um, simple and light of tufts, but I want to use a few of those because I think it blends with the color well and I don't have anything else that works with more of a desert. So the frozen tufts it is. Um, I use them quite regularly. Actually, it's one of my favorite tuft designs. 
Um, but yeah, that's the plan. So we'll see you next week. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think of the base in the comments. Let me know what you would have done differently. And we will check back with you and actually paint the vampire next week. <laughs>